Hi guys, this is Belle here and welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we are going to be covering a topic that you guys have asked me to cover. We're going to be going over the entire Brittany Dawn foster care situation. So if you guys are new or not new here or haven't seen them, I actually have covered Brittany Dawn before. In my opinion, I believe that she is a scammer, which honestly really started a lot of the digging into her on my end. And then now we've kind of developed where I feel like this is a very extremely dangerous person in my opinion. And so we've talked about multiple things that she has been involved with when it comes to her. She lives freed retreats or just her court case actually that is going to be coming up next month because she has allegedly scammed people and so much more. And with that, finally, we are going to be covering the foster care situation because I'm very concerned about this. Before you hop into today's video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell button down below. My blog channel, podcast, and merch, and everything else is in the description below. And yeah, let's get into it. Before we hop into today's video, I want to talk about today's sponsor. So if you guys don't know, I am someone that is, I'm going all the time, whether it's I'm traveling, I'm working, there's just a lot usually going on in my life and I always have specific things that I like to call my pause moments where I have to pause and stop what I'm doing but I can't leave or go away because for example let's say I'm at the airport and I'm sitting there waiting during one of my layovers or for example I'm waiting for a video to upload and process and I can't really walk away because it's working but I need to kind of kill some time while I'm waiting. I like finding new ways of kind of relaxing, unwinding, distracting, and killing some time and with that today we're going to talk about the app Block Blast. So Block Blast is an addicting fun and 100% free game that you're able to download today and kill some time or just have fun wherever you're at. It's an original combo gameplay. You can drag and drop blocks onto the board to fill a row or column to complete elimination and clear multiple rows or columns at once, which will produce a really fun elimination animation as well as extra points. I love games where you have to look ahead and strategize. It gets you thinking and it's again a wonderful way to kill time. And what's great is this is a game for all ages. So if you are a parent, for example, that want to kill some time, but then if you also have a kiddo that wants to play as well, that will work out just fine. It's perfect for all ages. It's great to unwind after a long day, and it's just a good little break from reality sometimes. And whenever you start playing, I want you guys to go comment down below what your high score is, because my current high score is 3,928, but I want to see if some of you can beat me or where you guys are at on the game. Like I said, go down the description below or the pinned comment, click on the link, and start playing today. Thank you so much to Block Blast for sponsoring today's video and creating an extremely fun and addicting game, and now let's get into it. So let's get started with some of the explanation of the foster care system. So again, if you guys need a bit of a backstory on Brittany Dawn, I will have a deep dive pop over here of that I made around last year, I believe. So going into Brittany Dawn, they, her and her husband have been really adamant about wanting to get involved with fostering. They apparently allegedly were thinking of adopting, but again, some of this is kind of still up in the air apparently. So from July 18th was when they actually made their first announcement. So this is when they were talking about how they were finally officially were getting involved with becoming foster parents. Now they did did talk about how they joined a program that was allegedly a foster to adopt, which again, that's all speculation. I'm not too sure. It, it sounds like that's changed, but I, again, I'm not too sure on that one. There's nothing that has been posted publicly for me to really confirm or deny that. Then December 12th of 2022 was when they actually had a first foster. And then in January 18th was when the child was apparently reunified with a relative, family, whatever the case may be, still unknown, but they had the baby for around a month or so maybe. When it comes to talking about Brittany Dawn, some people have been like, well, wait, why are we so concerned about the foster care situation? Don't you want people to be foster parents? Now, real quickly, I wanna make it very very clear that being a foster parent is incredible. I don't have insane amounts of knowledge on it, but from what I do know, that has got to be a very incredible thing for someone to do, a very amazing selfless thing for someone to do. And there are many, many children in the system, sadly to this day, that do need foster parents and foster parents are very, very valuable. What I am concerned with is, of course, while being a foster parent can be wonderful, that doesn't inherently mean every person that participates may have a good goal or could be a good person or a safe person at that, which is, again, a really sad reality. And with Brittany Dawn, we have come to the realization that there is a very toxic and dangerous past, in my opinion, from what we've seen from her to her husband and so much more. And so many people are like, how the hell does she become a foster parent to begin with? And her husband, especially. Real quickly, I actually want to read off some of the descriptions about how to be a foster parent in Texas and additionally things that would disqualify you. So this is from the childwelfare.gov website. Now, again, if there's any other information or details, please feel free to send it my way because I'm always wanting to learn and understand this better. But but this says, what disqualifies you from being a foster parent in Texas? The applicant has ever been convicted of a felony, child abuse or neglect, spouse abuse, a crime against children, including CP, a crime involving violence, including RSA, homicide, not including other types of physical assault or battery. So right here, I'm very surprised because if you guys don't 
know, Brittany Don's husband, Jordan, has actually had a serious involvement with this. Brittany Don's husband, Jordan, was a cop in the Kansas City Police Department. They they have had major, major issues already. They've had issues for years, and it's absolutely appalling and disgusting to me. But for Kansas City, there is was a video that was released where Jordan used excessive force, and it was it, it's absolutely disgusting. We cover it in another video, so that way if you guys do want to see, and I don't have it displayed in the video, but if you want to watch it, I have the link in the description below because I understand that it could be very triggering and stressful for some people because that is a very stressful topic. There was some legal issues, but apparently the department really defended him, which I'm very uncomfortable with. But moral of the story, he didn't work there anymore and apparently finished off with a great record. Moral of the story, though, we visibly see the way that he was using excessive force. There's no excuse or reason for that. And I'm just very, very alarmed at the fact that he escalated so quickly and now he is a foster parent. That does not sit right with me. People that escalate that quickly to physical violence is very scary in my opinion and I don't know how the hell that wasn't clocked because if anything Brittany is a very is a pretty popular topic I would say and like if you look her up you're going to find a lot of information right? Now that doesn't inherently mean it's completely true of course I want to acknowledge that but there's a lot that you can dig into to find out if this person has a sketchy history. I mean hell I look up every person that I've ever gone on a date with for example like I, you look up people right you you want to check and so assuming that they do background checks and other things I would wonder if they knew that or there's something else going on now there's other additional speculation right now that allegedly this foster situation is being run through a church or a possible connection that they have so I again I don't know exactly how that would play or work but a part of me is having a theory you know this is just my theory that they have certain connections and access to people churches and things where things about their past are going to be ignored because again not only does Jordan have a past that's very unethical and sketchy and very terrifying in my opinion but then we also have Brittany where Brittany genuinely has issues right in itself with a lawsuit she is getting sued by Texas and so me sitting here thinking she could possibly have to pay out or settle hundreds of thousands of dollars if maybe close to a million dollars in what world is she being accepted to be a foster parent and in what world is she even capable of being a foster parent if she's literally battling the state of Texas Texas legally. I don't even know how that was allowed and I'm very uncomfortable with that because if this is getting just ignored and let on then like what organization is she going through to allow this to happen or like that is just very scary to me. Another point that I wanted to bring up that I thought was very very uncomfortable and stressful for me we're just reading through this and thinking about it is especially Jordan's situation Brittany getting sued by Texas but another really big point that I want to make is Brittany Dawn's history with pets. We actually covered this in a previous video but I want to kind of recircle back on it a little bit more. Brittany Dawn literally has had major alleged issues when it comes to taking care of pets. Apparently, a the owner of a horse stable was talking about how she just left her horse there, was not paying bills, was not taking care of it, and it was just being neglected. There were other cases and scenarios where she would just randomly room home dogs, like just out of the blue, like, oh God, whoopsies, and like it happened too frequently. And then the most recent event had happened where she was not paying attention. Her and Jordan left to go to Home Depot or something, I believe, and they did not have it to where the dogs were properly in the house in a proper fence etc and with that you guys know pets will get out pets will get adventurous and one of her dogs sadly got hit by a car and then again when they are live in a very populated area that is close to vets emergency vets etc instead they thought it was a good idea for Jordan to apparently shoot the dog in the street even though it was still alive I it was appalling disgusting and I'm sitting here thinking if you were incapable of taking care of a pet taking care of a pet long term mind you and you neglect it to where the dog will get out okay dog will get out and escape what in the hell what business do you have having a foster child or a child in general if you are incapable of taking care of a pet and making sure that you are not neglecting that pet making sure that it's being taken care of no absolutely not that's extremely alarming to me about how a screaming red flag I do not trust this individual to be a good parent that watches her for her child and speaking of we already had a situation with the first foster child so I'm now going to be going into some of the issues with her first foster child because now she does have another child that is in the house right now so one of the first problems and red flags when it comes to Brittany Dawn and was she literally post this video it's deleted now she's deleted this she posts this video about her forgetting some things and leaving the child in the house alone with the stove on let's watch foster mom feel the day is pretty much becoming a daily thing at this point so we're making lemonade out of lemons so this morning I'm taking care of little one little one falls asleep on me so I lay little one down for a nap and I'm like, 
All right, we're gonna get a workout in. Super fast, 30 minutes, go. Finish that workout and I walk back inside. The little one is still napping and I'm like, ha, I have my life together right now. That was sarcasm for anyone not picking up on that. As I turn the corner from the garage, all of a sudden I am hit with the smell of something burning. And then it dawns on me. I left a pot of potpourri burning on the stove without water. The effort was there. And honestly, the effort is what counts, right? Yes. So yeah, she joked about it, thought that was funny. That's not funny to laugh about, oh my gosh, the house could have burned down and a child was in there. How is that funny? Fires happen, accidents happen. But the fact that she was so obsessed with, well, I'm going to go do this and leave and then come back and oh, whoopsies. Oh my God, foster mom fail, please. And of course she got a lot of backlash for it. Absolutely so. But she deleted it and now she's a little bit more careful with her words. But still, the fact that that was an actual incident, I get that there's some things you're going to forget get and heck up because you're an exhausted mom that I understand and I'm not a parent but I know th certain things are going to happen but I can't mentally wrap my noggin around I don't know why you joke about it if it's a funny thing that's what really irked me is how it was funny to her that is not funny when a kid could die that's not funny at all now the second thing I want to cover is Brittany Dawn as we know have has had a big problem with oversharing on the internet now we already know that she has had an issue with the situation where she allegedly scammed a homeless man that was struggling with addiction out of money too she overshared a lot of information about that individual she posted way too much that we should not have had access to i i can't even imagine going through such a tough time and having some random goofy woman just posting up a bunch of things about my personal experience my traumas my struggles that is so devastating so she has a history of this okay she has a history of oversharing even with her and her husband it's like she's really milking the husband and the marriage stuff now to a different level that i'm like do you all not get a break from the camera it's it's a lot okay i learn way too much about that child that I should not have known, right? From what I have been learning when it comes to foster care, your goal is to reunify the child with the caregiver, parents, etc. And so with that, you would think to consider the parents of the child that you were taking care of at the time. The problem is, is there was a lot of posting about the child apparently, uh, allegedly was born with drug addiction and was experiencing withdrawal symptoms. Again, I'm not very well versed on these terms. I'll pop up some examples up here so you guys understand what I'm talking about. But that was what was happening apparently. But she was posting it and I, I didn't like that because it was really odd to me how I shouldn't know those things, right? I shouldn't be seeing so much about someone else's child like that. Now, here's the thing. I know some people like wait a minute like how much did she post so she didn't show photos like she only posted up photos of the baby but the baby had like an emoji or something over the face and I don't believe she specified anything like gender wise either way that is just too much in my opinion you j like she just got this child and was airing out so many details she even made some posts about how apparently this was God's will that the mom was going through what she was going through and that she had this child I don't like that I do not like that at all I, that is gross to be be like oh of course I'm supposed to have this child right with me and the mom is supposed to be suffering and then this child is supposed to be suffering but I'm here to play savior I do not like that and the way that she's handling the situation is highly distasteful and again posting too much about the child and what's happening with the baby it's too much and I, I couldn't even imagine having a child uh, my child being in foster care and then finding out that this woman is airing out my story my experiences and my baby just all over the damn internet like and that's the thing is we don't know what could be happening with that mom there's the, the, who we have no idea but at the end of the day i feel like it's just very alarming with how much she milked this situation like she was posting consistently all the time about it and again i would like to make this very clear i think it's great to bring awareness have conversations about things like foster care and foster parents that's an insanely important topic not everyone knows a lot about it. So sharing that kind of stuff is great, but there's a tasteful way of doing it. But airing out the kid consistently, oversharing even about the mom, about like that is far too much. And then another red flag, like I kind of briefly mentioned earlier, is the fact that I'm very concerned about them being foster parents when it comes to their financial situation. Because again, literally Brittany is involved with a huge lawsuit. And I would assume that that would be a really big red flag from the get-go. The fact that there 
could be so much that she could lose from that. And because honestly, I'm hoping she loses. Sorry, I am. I'm hyped about that. Hope the people that got scammed by her get justice, period. But I'm also really concerned about her being a foster parent and then the stress and things that could be going in that household due to the fact that she could be losing a lawsuit here. It's just, there's a lot of red flags coming up right now and I don't know why at all that they're doing this. I do want to kind of circle back and discuss some other theories that I have when it comes to Brittany Dawn and this entire foster care situation. So we've seen, in my opinion, you guys can comment what you think and you don't have to agree with me on this, but I think that she did a hefty rebrand to the highly religious stuff. Now, again, you can be religious and not do this and do it ethically, but then you can also do it like Brittany did, in my opinion. I think Brittany really changed so that way she could have this type of public exemption of criticism. But then additionally, I think now she is adding more rebranding and adding more things because I feel like it makes her one, look better to the public at this point for people who are unaware of her problems. But then two, I feel like there's a lot of money involved with this. You guys know, and if you've seen, I have actually covered family channels on this channel and I'm actually really hoping to expand more on other family vloggers and channels. But a lot of family vloggers and channels make insane amounts of money off of their children. And that is child exploitation. When majority of your content and money is being made strictly off of your children and not just you, that's a problem. Now, again, there's a good ways of being a mother that is also a content creator. If majority of your content is, again, not exploitive, mainly about you, and if you removed your child off your platform and still could make the money and get that good engagement, then okay, great. But she is taking it to a different level. I think that she is trying to transition to the mom vlogger area, and I feel like that's what we're going to start seeing someday, especially when she does have her own child, because at the end of the day, she's already posting every little bit that she can about the foster babies. That, that's what she's been doing, especially with the recent one now. That is genuinely what she has been sharing a ton of. I truly think the second she is legally allowed to, whether it is adopting a child and if they are allowing her to, or if she has a baby of her own, I personally think she's going to exploit those kids so bad because already she's kind of started this process with overly sharing Jordan. She is overly shared about James, the homeless man that was struggling with addiction. She is already overshared about many other different topics that we should not have access to. And I believe that she is comfortable with this religious mommy vlogger aspect. And I think that that's actually what we're going to see develop in the next several years, especially with, in my opinion, her knowledge of how good that niche performs. I think especially with the lawsuit, if it goes bad and if it goes South, I truly think that's going to be a main pivot for her being a mom showing things and I feel like we're going to see a different level of exploitation happening with Brittany where it's she's going to be mainly a mommy vlogger and creator where she posts her kids too much or there's going to be a lot of private moments that are shared that we should not have access to where she's going to be sharing a lot of vulnerable moments. Another reason why I think this is happening is Brittany actually posted up not too long ago about how God has told her that she needs to be stepping forward with this new project. Now again, I'm like, okay, what business is it, babe? Like, what are you po what are you selling now? Is it really good or is it BS? I, I've allegedly heard, and I found the website, I've allegedly heard that it is a baby clothing line. And I think that's what she's doing. I get it. I, I understand the logic behind it because I get there's a lot of money behind it. I get to some people who think that this is normal would think that that's fine and healthy. And truly with the amount that she's posted up about the foster babies now and other people in other vulnerable positions, I truly think that the mommy vlogger transition is starting now. And I feel like she's planning it from what, in my opinion, opinion, especially because of this court case stuff. I truly think she sees the money in kids as messed up as this is. And I believe that's where it's going. And I'm very alarmed for it. I'm very, very concerned. I'm very concerned with, hey, if there's going to be different children that are brought into that home, if they're actually going to be safe, because yes, th that is a logical thing. I don't care if anyone thinks that excessive. I am concerned for safety, especially with what I've personally seen from just everything being posted up with Jordan. He made excuses and blamed other people for it and thought he was doing great and how quickly he jumped from zero to 100 is very alarming to me and I'm very concerned for anyone's safety even though Brittany is not a good person in my opinion I would also be concerned for hers as well because like that's that's alarming and then additionally with the oversharing of personal experiences life experiences and just literally anything that has to do with the child it's very gross at this point she's hit a different level where a lot of her content isn't even necessarily about her I would say it's starting to become more about kids or more about promoting her she lives freed stuff which she can make a lot of money 
money off of. And But the way that she's doing it is unethical and exploitive, to say the least. So I know that was a shorter video and a very quick one, but I wanted to kind of recap the foster care situation stuff and how I'm very concerned about it. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and comments down below. Do you think that she's going to become a mommy vlogger? Whatever the case may be, I would love to hear it. I'm, I'm definitely really concerned about this and concerned about the other child that is in her care right now. Yeah, I'm, I don't feel like this is a good or safe situation for any child at all. So due to her and her husband's history, I don't in any way feel that they are fit to be parents or foster parents because of the way that they have approached social media, exploiting people, scamming, etc. That's just not right. So don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.